So I have gone and marked in your pencil cases very crudely with my ugly handwriting. Um, in every one of these cases, you should have a 6H, 5H, 4H, 3H, 2H, 2B, 3B, 4B, hey, 5B, 6, 7, and 8B. So they go from softest, sorry, hardest to softest. So your 8B is the softest, your 6H is the hardest. Your HB, your number two pencil, fits in there. So let's, I'm going to write it down actually to make it simple. So softest, so hardest. And if you want to make notes of this, you can. Hardest we have is 6H, then... 5H, then 4H, you want to grab this, um, then 3H, and you can see it goes darker as I keep writing, 2H, then we have these that are not in the boxes. So they go H, F, sorry, F, H, B, B. This is 1B. Then 2B. Three B, four B, five B, six B, seven B, and the softest one we have is eight B. Thank you for explaining that first. You're welcome. Okay. Also, we are filming. Tonight, if you don't want to be on camera, if you don't want your face on camera, uh, you can grab a red paper and put it on the front of your table. So uh, today I'm going to talk, we're going to talk about, um, I want to start by explaining something. Does anybody know, has anybody ever heard of Piaget? He's a pretty well-known French psychologist, yep, you know, okay, about, uh, and, he, and he talked about ch children's developmental stages. He talks about how kids learn language. So you might have a cousin or a, a little kid that you know that they learn the word for horse, and then they go around and calling everything that's got four legs a horse for a little while, right? And then they learn, okay, not everything that's got four legs is a horse. And then they, they, they form concepts. So they're, they're classifying things into concepts, uh, uh, into ideas, right? So when you're drawing, have you ever tried to draw something and then you, let's say you try to draw that tree out there and then it comes out looking like, um, like one of those uh, trees that the little kids draw? Hmm, I forgot something here. Um, that's because you're drawing what you think the tree should look like <coughs> instead of what you see, right? And you might have heard an art teacher tell you that to draw what you see and not what you think should be there. Um, so we're going to talk about how to do that, right? So if you're trying to draw this tree, you're probably doing okay, right? Uh, this, this looks an awful lot like the tree that the kid's going to draw. But You, you know, able, are you able to differential? I mean, if you're if you're in your room and there's no obstacle, no objects around to look at, are you able to draw from your mind? But then, if you, there is you, an object there for you to look at, then you can draw. I can I can do either way. Sure, you way. you can. can there's nothing do. wrong with drawing from your mind. Mm -hmm. But how long did you practice to be able to draw a tree from your mind? How many trees did you draw and then go look at a tree yeah. and go, oh, that's not what a tree looks like, I and then draw on another tree until that's you, true. That's yeah. True, yeah. So. You can absolutely teach yourself. 
So I mean, I mean a tree that looks like this, right? That's what I mean when I say a tree that a kid draws. So if, if you go and you try to draw this tree, and you try to draw it like the kid draws it, you're not going to wind up with this tree. Um, so we're going to talk about how to draw fundamentals and not things. Last week, I walked you through how to draw an eye. And we looked at how to do line, how to do shading, right? We talked about different things. So I'm going to teach you to do that by yourself. That's the idea here. I'm not going to every time stand here and walk you through. This is not, uh, what's that thing where you get drunk and paint? It's not that thing, OK? Um, so let's see. So what are the fundamentals? So if you go to this paper that I gave you guys, we can look through the fundamentals real quick. So let's, if we look at this tree, then you can look at the lines of this tree, right? There's lines along the outsides of the branches. There's also lines on the inside, but that also falls under edge or texture. So line, is, line can be solid, it can be thick. This is a good book. I recommend this book. We have it in our collection. Um, I'll show you an example she has of different ways that you can draw lines. So can you see that? So different types of lines. Uh, they're already down, but I'll try to turn them down some more. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. I can also try to mess with the settings on the TV. Are you good with TV settings and remotes? When can you dry. try to try to turn the brightness down a little bit? Because okay. I don't even know how to do that. <laughs> First time you're here with me. You're way better at technologically savvy stuff than I am, I'm sure. So different kinds of line. Um, we'll look at that in a second. OK, so how about form or shape? When we drew our eyeball last week, we looked at which shape did we look at? How did we create shape? When we did the sphere. Right? Yeah, so we studied the sphere and how light falls on the sphere, and we used that light and shadow to create the shape. Um, so we'll actually probably talk more about geometric shapes at some point. Uh, space, that's proportion and anatomy and perspective and things like that. Uh, if you have any questions about any of these terms, you can go Google them. You can ask me. You can look at this book. Um, but we'll also be practicing these things. So I'm just quickly going over them, just kind of giving you an overview of what's going on here. So, um, and then there's edge and texture to think about. So edge and texture is like, if I look at that tree out there, and I look at the edge of it, it kind of disappears, blends into around the surroundings. It's not a hard line that goes around the outside. right? So the texture, the edge of that tree, is not a defined texture. It's not a defined edge. You can think about shadows, too. right? If you hold your hand over your table right now and you look at the shadow, it's diffuse. There's you might, you might have some hard, shadows with hard lines, and then you'll have another shadow that's got like a soft edge, yes. You know what I find hard, hard, hard to do is if, if I focus on an object, I can draw it pretty well, but if when I'm alone and there's no, nothing to focus on, then I find it hard to go back to that object that I drew before. I find it hard to draw that object that I, there before I had in front of my eyes. I can't, it's a lot harder to exactly, unless I practice over and over again in mm -hmm. front of me, and then I can remember in my mind. But so you're drawing the concept and not an object. You're drawing a dog and not this dog, right? Yeah. So you're drawing a tree, not this tree. But if it's in front of me, and an object, whether it be a dog or a different kind of tree, then I can draw it. But if I'm, if I'm alone in my room and there's all I see is four walls, and it's hard for me to draw, unless I practice that, that particular object that I've seen before over and over again, then, it, then it's easy for me to draw. Yeah, that's why we do drills or, um, or practice. Thanks, Mike. OK, so the, you can see the uh, different types of lines, she describes a bold line. 
So that's a hard outline. You'll see this a lot in pop art, a broken line. So this is the kind of sketchy, sketchy line. I like to do lines like this a lot. A pure line, so this is one weight all around. Weight in line uh, means how thick, how heavy the line is, how, how, how strong the line is. And this is a, she calls this a lost and found line. It's an interesting word. So in some places, the line disappears. We talked about this with our eyeball last week. Remember, some of the places our lids disappear and you don't see that line. Okay, so that's line, edge and texture. Color is, there's a difference. This is, I want to go over this stuff real quick because it's going to have bearing on the exercise we're going to do. So color is the color wheel. We're not going to talk about that yet. We're still using graphite pencils, but it's also how light is reflected. And there's a difference between lightness and darkness and color. So what do I mean by that? Value and color. So value is what you call lightness and darkness. So if you look at this Coke can and you took a picture of this in black and white, the red would be darker than the silver and that's value. So if you turn it to black and white, that's value. But if you look really carefully at the red, it's not a flat color. There's value inside the red too. So there's spots where the red is lighter and darker. And then there's spots where the, the silver is lighter and darker. So that's... That yeah, so that's, it's a cylinder. Yes, that's how it reflects the light. So that's part of form, form or shape the geometric shape. So we'll talk about that also. Okay, so at some point I'll be organized, y'all. Um, sure, absolutely. Yeah, this one's currently checked out to me. Um, you're welcome to take a look at it. We've got two of them in our system, so you can put one on hold. Um, if you want to check that one out, I'll go return it and you can check it out. That's fine too. Okay, so... Da, 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 da. We talked about that. And so what we're going to do today, let me start by showing you some stuff. Does anybody know who Andy Warhol is? Does anybody not know who Andy Warhol is? Okay, cool. So Andy Warhol... Musician, director, musical director. No, he's a pop artist. Pop. Yeah, pop artist. And he drew a lot of Coca-Cola cans. Oh, yeah, you're thinking about the song, The Andy Warhols. Yeah, you worked with uh, that one. The, the band. The underground. So this is, uh, this is Andy Warhol's um, pay, uh, drawing of a Coke bottle. So this is obviously, and this one he focused on color. He only drew the colors that he saw. Um, he hmm? Yes, he, he, oh, I think this is a drawing. I don't, uh, I'm pretty sure this is a drawing, not a painting, but... I'm not 100% sure on the medium that he used for that. He usually used silk screening. This is one of his silk screenings. So in this one, he just focused on values. Light and dark, black and white. He'd reduced the whole Coca-Cola bottle to just black and white. Um, and this one, this is one of his earlier uh, variations. He focused on line. So he drew all the lines that he saw. Um, this is, this is actually the earliest version of it, I think. And this one, he also focused on mostly line. There's some value there and then some color because he realized that Coke bottles aren't see-through. They're green. Um, this is one of his Coca-Cola cans. Um, and there's another one of his Coca-Cola cans. Actually, I don't think this is him, but the website I got it off of claimed that it was him. So today we're going to be drawing some Coke cans. <laughs> this is what we're going to be doing. So you're going to be looking at a Coke can and you're going to be drawing it. You're going to take four of the fundamentals. And if you don't want to use proportion, structure, lines and light and shadows, you can choose four other things to use to analyze your Coke can, if that makes more sense to you. So for, let me just see if I can make this thing full screen. For the proportions, I'm going to look at my Coke can and I'm going to use 
a pencil to measure. I'm going to say, OK, so the width of my cocaine is about that wide. And that's about just a little bit more than half the, the height. So I'm going to make some notes about the proportions of my coke. And then I'm going to say, OK, so the bottom of the coke thing starts about um, 3 fifths up the coke can. And then it's, it's so high that it goes over that lip there. So I'm just going to, I'm not focusing on any of the other fundamentals. I'm not trying to draw a beautiful coke can. There's other cans, too, if you don't want to draw coke. Um, <laughs> I'm just making some notes, of a rough drawing of the proportions of the Coca-Cola can. Then I'm going to analyze it by structure. How is this Coca-Cola can put together? The center of it is a cylinder. Good. Uh, somebody passed math. Uh, so the centerpiece is a cylinder. The edges here is a cone with a top cutoff. I think that's called a truncated cone. Uh, if you look at it from the side, it's a trapezium, right? Um, if you look at it from the front, it's a cone with the top cut off. Uh, the bottom of it is a torus. It's like a ring. Um, and if you, if you look at it from the side, it's like a rectangle, but there's the corners are cut out, right? So you can, you can analyze it. And maybe you see things in it that I didn't notice, right? You can get as in-depth as you want. You, can, you don't have to do it on a paper like this either. You can use one paper for each drawing. Um, and then I decided it made sense for me to analyze this by light and shadow. So obviously, I didn't draw it in the same light as I have it now. But I just drew the values that I saw. I didn't draw the Coca-Cola label. I didn't focus on the lines. I didn't focus on anything except the values. And then I just drew the lines that I saw at the angle that I had it at when I was drawing it. And then if you want to, if you finish all this and you want to, you can draw it in detail. So you can put all of these things together and draw the perfect Coca-Cola can. So you kind of overlap all of these. And this is a really good way to, str to study anything. Obviously, if you're, not, if you're studying a tree, it might not make sense to deconstruct the structure of the tree, right? Um, so maybe for the tree, you want to focus a little bit on texture or edge. Just draw the texture of the tree. Um, maybe for the tree, it's going to make more sense to focus on the colors that you see. Okay? So there are Coke light cans at the back. They're going to be the easiest thing that we have to draw today. If you want a challenge and you don't want to draw, the reason they're easy is because they're shiny, they're silver, and they're matte. So they're going to reflect light. They're going to give you something to look at. The lines on them are fairly simple. You can turn them. You don't have to draw that side. You can turn them until you get a side that's easier to draw. Um, your values are simple on them. Your colors, everything's fairly simple on these. There's also a regular Coke can, a Pepsi can. And then if you're like, this is way too fundamental for me, there's some like soup cans there too. So you can draw one of those <laughs> if you want to challenge. There's also glass bottles. So go grab something and start drawing. I took proportion, structure. This is value, so light and shadow. I actually wrote it on the side here. And then this one's just lines. Yeah, you're welcome. If you think it makes more sense to draw this can by some of the other things on there, then draw it by some of the other things on there. I think those things make a lot of sense for a Coca-Cola can. So I recommend picking an angle that you want to draw your Coke can at, putting it that, at that angle, and leaving it there. <laughs> Don't move it around, because then you're going to get confused. So the, let me show you guys the pencil at arm's length trick. So if I'm drawing the TV, right, I can take my pencil, I can hold it at arm's length, and I can close one eye, right, and I can kind of say, OK, so the, the TV is that tall. I hold my finger there. And then I can put my pe pencil on the paper and make a mark where the tip of the pencil goes. OK. You guys look confused. Let me demonstrate this another way. So the reason I do it at arm's length is because then I don't get confused about, then I don't mess it up. Because obviously, when I bring the pencil closer to me, 
you're going to look shorter. So let's say I'm drawing um, your head. So I'm going to keep them in at arm's length. I'm going to measure the height of your head. I'm going to make a mark. That's the height. I'm going to leave my finger where I had it. That's the bottom of the head. Now I need to see the width of your head. So that's the width. So there and there. So we, I tend to draw the general before I draw the details. So now I've got the general idea of your head. Then I can go, OK, quarter of that is where your ear is. So about there, that's where your ear goes. Then I can go, OK, halfway up is where your eyes go. So there's the eyes. There's some glasses there. You, you see what I'm saying. You get the idea. So that's the pencil at arm's length trick. So now I have some 3D shapes on the screens for you guys, on the screen for you guys with names. If you want to refer to those. You don't have to, but if you wanted to. Mm, not a cat. Yeah, I concentrated just on the shadows. I, I, yeah. I didn't do. These are supposed to be the reflections. Those are like yeah. the brightest, and this is the reflection of my paper mm -hmm. that I'm drawing on. Yeah, Anyways. that's the cool thing about drawing shiny, shiny um, objects because you can actually see like the reflections of things in it. And this is supposed to be the reflection that's from the the gorgeous the pop top. Yeah, th that's called a tab. Yeah. Yeah. It looks a little bit brighter here, at least from where I'm sitting. It's a little mm -hmm. brighter here than it is here. Do you see that? It, it's not the same brightness right here all around on the top. So mm -hmm. it a little bit of, I, I would just use a brush or there's a line that runs around here. Okay. So you can try to add that one in okay. too. Okay. Did you get understood, understand how I made the pencil trick? Yes. So for this one, you can actually use the actual pencil right up against it since it's close enough for you to touch. It's smaller. You can. Oh, yeah. um, we've yeah. got loose papers too. Yeah. Yeah. But we don't want to use sketch paper yeah. now. But yeah, so this is I'll look at this thing and I'll go, okay. The most general is it's kind of almost a box. Right, and we'll get to boxes. We'll draw some boxes soon. So it's kind of sort of a box. But then there's like cutouts, and I'm just kind of roughly going to sketch them in. I'm not going to be super obsessive about where they go. I just want to get the general idea first. Then I'm going to go, OK, there's a line down the middle. It's not exactly in the center. It's a little to the left of the center. So I'm kind of sketching that in. Kind of getting that. So that's roughly the blade. That's roughly the shape of the gap. OK, so now I'm going to look at this versus this. Maybe I'll walk away and go do something else. And I'm going to take a darker pencil. Like, let's say I'm taking a 2B, maybe. And then I'm going to start fixing things. So OK, so I feel like this is wider than that. So I'm going to make it a little bit narrower. All right, so I'm leaving my original drawing underneath it, because I can always go erase and clean up lines. So that's the top. Maybe I'm studying it for lines right now. That's the bottom. And it's OK if this line is thicker on this side than on that side. It's because I drew it at a slant at first. When I'm ready, I can just take my eraser and go fix it. But I start with the general first, the general idea, and then I get more intricate. So I, I go and I look, OK, so if I divide this side in quarters, then that is one quarter. Half of this indent is one quarter. And the, so then I go, OK, so if I divide this in half there and there, then my indent should start here and here. And maybe I do it like this at first, right? And then go, okay, 
that's not straight. So then I go, what do I need to do to make it straight? I go in here. Now I'm happy with that end end. And I'm not going to obsess about the line being too thick here. Once I go and I add the other elements, that's going to correct itself. So once I go and I go, OK, the blade is a, is, um, a lighter value than this red on the outside, I'm going to maybe go color this red in, if that makes sense. So then that doesn't matter that my line was heavier on this side than on that side. And I can also go fix it with a, an eraser. Does that make sense? So draw the general and then the specific. But for this study, right now I'm looking at everything on this sharpener. For your can, you're looking at one thing. You're only looking at lines. And if your can looks like this, that's OK. Like if it looks like somebody crushed it, but you have all the lines that you can see on your paper, that's fine. You did a good, good job. Right? When you go put it all together, that's when you're going to worry about how the can stands up. Anybody else want to see this example close up? Okay. This is my favorite Valentine's painting. It's called Time Clipping Cupid's Wings. It's a neoclassical painting. Uh, the god, the Roman god Time Clipping Cupid's Wings. There's a few, actually a few variations of this painting. So. From far away I thought he was like spanking a baby. <laughs> no, he's oh. cutting his wings off. It's even worse. <laughs> That looks a lot better. <laughs> so which element are you studying right now? Proportion? Yeah. Structure? Proportion? Yeah. yeah. OK. It's so have you? This is sized up to this. OK. So did you make, I want you to, don't draw it in detail, but make notes. Say, OK, this is about half the size of this, like, like that. Oh. Make notes on the paper. Oh. I'll show you close what I, what I mean. So for this one, what I did. Do you see how I, I actually wrote on there? So the lip, this part sticks out. The width is plus minus half of the height of one oh, yeah. side. Yeah. Cheat notes. Yeah, cheat notes. That's what, that's what I want you to do for proportions. Okay. Not a pretty picture, just cheat notes. <laughs> I'll show you another thing that I drew. And drawing um, figure studies. So this is the first thing I drew to draw a figure study. Right? This is these are these are my cheat notes on proportion. Okay? Don't worry, you'll, you'll see, you guys will get this eventually. We'll, we'll get to figure studies. We're just not there yet. Um, and then these, same picture, OK? And this is not, it's not pretty. It's not a perfect dancing ballerina or whatever. It's just progressions. Okay, that's what you're drawing right now on the coke can. You're drawing progressions. You're not trying to draw the perfect coke can on the first go around. You're just drawing progressions. Basic structure, studying the anatomy. This is where the rib cage go. These are where the shoulders go. This one is out. So you're studying the anatomy of a coke can right now. It's a little bit less dynamic than a dancer. You can see even on the, the one that I'm on now, I still haven't gotten her face right. That's for the next go round. Have you ever been fishing? 
Has any of you ever been fishing? Did you ever go out with somebody that took you to go fishing, like a commercial fishing boat or whatever? Not a commercial fishing boat, but like somebody who you pay to take you out. You know how they like, they go to where the fish is and then they put the bait on the hook and then they throw the, and then they're like, here, you catch the fish. I'm not doing that. I'm gonna <laughs> teach you how to catch your own fish. Last week I did that. This week I'm not doing that. <laughs> that's not an art class. That's paint by numbers. We did, we did do a little bit of fundamentals last week. Last week, the purpose of last week was to prove to you that you can do it um, and to show you how it all comes together and to show you the value of studying the different elements of everything that you draw. Are you studying values right now? Well, trying to. Okay, so you missed last week, so I'll show you a trick that I showed last week. Um, and that's the paintbrush trick, and have you ever used the smudge stick? No. Okay, so I'll show you how to use a paintbrush and a smudge stick. Because when you go watch the video, you'll see that, but um, I'll do it on here. So, really neat trick for pencil is if I'm doing my very rough Coke can, right, really roughly, because now I'm just studying values, so it doesn't matter if the lines are all messed up and my tab isn't where it's supposed to go and my bottom of my Coke can doesn't look right. I'm just trying to see the side is darker, this side is a little bit darker, but this is the darkest side. And then there's a lot of light in the middle here, um, but there's also a highlight. So now I'm going to take my brush and this, I can actually move the graphite around with my brush and I can actually kind of get a mid-tone going on in the middle here. Maybe I want my mid-tone on the top too. And then I can go use my pencil again, get more of that dark edge going. Maybe I've, I, I got more of a dark edge on this side. I'm just drawing out of imagination right now. I'm not drawing out of looking at an actual can because I'm just showing you an example. Maybe there's another one really dark line that runs up here. And then maybe I use my eraser pencil to go add in some of those highlights. And I'm not focusing on my structure. I'm not trying to make a perfect can. I'm not going to worry about the lines on the top. I'm just drawing value. Mm -hmm. So that's the brush trick. The brush trick is awesome for graphite. It takes graphite to a whole new level. But yeah, that's how I did this cat too. The brush is great for anything that's smooth that you're trying to draw with graphite, like the can. And there we This is my favorite Valentine's painting. It's called Time Clipping Cupid's Wings. It's a neoclassical painting. Uh, the god, the Roman god Time Clipping Cupid's Wings. There's a few, actually a few variations of this painting. From far away I thought he was like spanking a baby. <laughs> no, he's cutting his wings off. It's even worse. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to make it so you guys see what I see. Oh, wait, you can't see it. There we go. Now I think everybody can see it. And I'm going to put it on my black paper. I was going to disturb this for a second. Or...
Ooh, this is seriously warped, I just realized. I'm gonna unwarp it real quick. Depends. Sometimes I like silence and sometimes I'll have my headphones in. Um, it just depends on what I'm in the mood for. Yeah. Sometimes it can be distracting. It depends on the mood that you're listening to things. But sometimes it, 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 it um, helps um, keep your mind to focus too on what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. It just really just depends on my mood. Yeah. I'm going to make this sort of quick and basic because I've only got 30 minutes to show you. Stick with Yeah, they love it when you do that. Oh, this is just the brush. Okay. So now I've done a study and I know my proportions and I know my values and I know how many lines are on my can and where they are. And I decide on the angle, the composition I'm going to use. And then I'm going to put it all together. So I know my can, the, I know my can is if I draw a box and you can use an eruder or not. Um, since I've got a side view of my can now, or almost a side view, I'm going to draw kind of a box to start off with because I studied the shape of this thing. Pencil is there. This is my 3H. It's a hard pencil. Yeah, I'm, I, I always, when I'm using pencils to draw, I always start with a fairly hard pencil and I make very light lines that I can erase because this is the general. Generally, it's kind of a box, right? I'm going to look at my dimensions. It's kind of weird because I'm doing this on the screen in front of me instead of what's on my paper, which is the opposite of what I want you guys to do. So I'm going to look at my dimensions. So that's the width. So I'm going to test it like this. That's my width. OK. Um, so I know that's the height that I need to do it at. That is my height. and I. Pay attention to where I'm going to measure it from. I'm not measuring it from the bottom. I see it a little bit at a different angle. So I'm going to, OK, sorry, reset what I just said. I'm going to measure it right from the top to the bottom. So that's very weird because I'm working with three different planes now. OK, so there's my top and there's my bottom. And then I'm going to come here to the same height. OK, so I need to make my can a little bit taller. So I need to make my top of my can over there. If I'm drawing it according to what I'm seeing on my screen, which is a bit stretched, apparently. So, or I probably just made a little wider than the can I've got here. OK, so make, I like to make my life hard. So I'm going to draw it bigger than the can I have in front of me. Or I can just make my width smaller since that's my height. I'm going to make my width smaller, I think. Yeah. So that's where I want to cut it off. Yeah, and I close my eyes so that I can, so I'm not confusing myself by looking from two different angles at the can. Because then there's really two cans, right? 
So that's about my height and my width of my box. Now I can, I can see that these, these corners are cut off. So I'm just kind of generally going to cut them off for now. Um, kind of see the height. And I can see that these corners are cut off. I could go measure again with my pencil uh, and see how far that cutoff point is from the top. So I'm going to go in the same spot. I was in the middle, so I'm going to measure in the middle again. So since I'm doing this in real life, I'll do it this way. So that's about the top. That's about where my lip ends. So when I cut off the corners, that's about where I'm going to cut them off. And I can check this angle too with my pencil. So that's the angle. So I use the side of my pencil to get that angle right. That's the angle. So I want it to be at the same angle on my paper. So I just bring that angle over here. And then I know I have to draw that line at that angle. So that's the angle I'm going to get. I need to increase this angle a little bit. And then there's that little lip. I'm going to kind of roughly place that lip. I'm going to draw this like I'm looking at it square from the side now, which is weird because I'm not really looking at it square from the side. But anyway. So, And then I also noticed that this isn't really a straight line. It's sort of curved. So I'm going to kind of add a little bit of that curvature in. Again, this is a 3H still. I can erase any of these lines. I can reinforce any of these lines with darker pencil later on. Once I go and smudge it all in, it won't really matter that some of these lines are here. Some of them will just vanish. Okay, so that's my general structure of my can. Since I'm looking at it from the side straight on, um, that's my proportions are more or less right. Maybe there's something not quite right here. Fix that. And I'm not, you, you'll notice I'm not like spending an hour over here drawing the lip perfectly. I'm just kind of roughly getting it in. And then I'm kind of roughly going to get this lip in as though I'm seeing it straight from the side. Um, I'm going to get my height of my, the bottom of the Coke. I'm going to see if I look at it from the top. If I cut the can straight down the middle, then I can see it hits that C about there. So my O is just a little bit to the right of the middle. So my O starts around here. My C is above the O. So my C ends about here. It goes over that lip, so it goes up. Maybe not quite that far, but it's okay. I'm just drawing the general for now. That's the bottom of it, so I know it has to curve up a little bit. So I'm kind of... Maybe I don't even draw the C yet. Maybe I don't even draw the lettering yet. I'm just drawing all the things that I just studied together as one thing. You can see it's fatter on this side than on the top. So I'm going to get some of that fatness in here and see that this is pretty fat. It's a pretty long middle piece. I can, again, I can go measure that with my pencil. And the width is about almost a third of the height. So if that's the width, then the height needs to be one, two, almost three times that, so about there about there. And it's compressed at the bottom. It comes together here and together here. Comes out here and there. And then I can see a part of that K, but not the whole thing. And there's a gap between the O and the K, so I'm just going to draw the side that I see, just that little bit of a line that I see there. And it goes up, but it disappears here. It's not, it doesn't run parallel to this edge. This appears there. So I'm drawing what I see, not what I, th I'm not going to squish the word Coke in here. Not because, just because I know it's a Coke can. And I can see the lettering down here. So, oh, 
Now I look at this and I see this is a little off. So I need to, that's why this is off. So now I can go and just kind of bring that up. And that's why I, I move to a different part, I come back. I see my mistakes. Maybe I, I go trace this line, right? So there's no corner there. So I can use my pencil and then curve it around to follow that line. Right, so I can do the same thing on my picture. Follow it there, curve it around. Okay, so there's too much sticking out over here. It's rounder, it's rounder. And I've got a pretty heavy line over here, but it's okay. I'll go select the parts of it I want to keep with a darker pencil. This kind of comes up. Erase some of that a little bit. I could even cover that up with the shadow of the can if it was standing up. You can erase the structure line or keep it. Some artists like to keep their structure lines. I do that sometimes. Like I showed you guys in the anatomy drawing, I. I kept some of those structure lines. Okay, so I decide I'm not going to add that or that right now. Now I'm going to look at my values. It's a little bit fatter over here. So now I'm going to take one of my darker pencils, maybe, and I'm going to start adding in some of those values. I'm going to use my 4B. I see that this side over here is pretty dark. And I'm going to actually draw over the coke that I drew before. I'm not going to worry about that. Draw this darkness in here. I see that there's a light area here. I'm going to ignore that for now. I'll erase that at the end. Because that's my method. You don't have to follow my method. You can do it the way that you want to do it. If you don't like erasing the things at the end, then you can leave them blank instead. And kind of add that line. So now I'm focusing on all the elements. Line, structure, proportions. So there's a pretty dark spot there and there, and there and there. And this is rough right now. Oop, see, me moving my head changes that shadow. <laughs> That's fun. So you see what I did? I pad my hand down, and then I'm drawing my lines not straight. They're going in a curve. So it's always it's a good habit to get into to not put your hand down on the paper. And you can also try holding your print pencil different ways. We talked about that a little bit last time. OK, so I can also see that if I turn this into black and white, the Coke letters would be darker than the rest of the can. So maybe I'm going to take my 8B, my d or that's my 3H, my 8B, my darkest pencil, and I'm going to go shade in the dark parts of that Coke. My style tends to be kind of sketchy. I like it. Um, Maybe your style is clean and round. That's OK. So I'm going to draw in the dark spots here with the darkest color that I have. I'm use the darkest 8B. And there's a light spot there. So I'm kind of going to leave that a little bit lighter. And then it goes dark again here. It's not the darkest, though. So I'm going to. There's some light spot there. This is where your, um, I'll show you guys how to use the gradient tool next time. The gradient tool comes in handy. How do you feel about drawing geometric shapes? How do you guys feel about doing still life with geometric shapes? So maybe we'll do that next time because it all adds up to drawing the face later on. Because I realized if we're going to draw a face, you guys need to know how to draw a cone and cylinders, right? So let's do geometric shapes and then we'll get to a face after that, face proportions. OK. 
Okay. Okay, so now I'm focusing on everything. I'm shading. It's very dark here. Okay, and I'm noticing that in my O, there's like a spot that's, a, it's like if I move my pencil there, it's going to vanish, but there's a spot that's a different value over here. I don't know if you guys can see it. So I'm going to, since I'm drawing everything, I'm going to leave that value a little bit lighter. I'm going to draw darker values around it. Or I could go erase it at the end. Just that one little sliver of a K that vanishes up here. And then I can see that the darkest spots are over here to the side. I'm not worrying about getting a clean line. I'm comfortable with messy. If you're not, then you can get a clean line. You can use a ruler. There's nothing wrong with it. Okay, so I'm getting my darkest values in with my darkest pencil. And some of my other darkest values are right here, but I'm also noticing that this isn't straight like I drew it. It's a little bit curved. So this edge of it is a little bit curved. The underside of it is a little bit curved. And it's a little bit narrower than I drew it too. So I'm going to start adding some of those values in. I'm not worrying too much about lines right now, although I am paying attention to them too. So I'm going to go over a second layer. Remember, we talked about layering. But that value there is as dark as this value down here and is as dark as, value as this value here. Okay, a bit more darkness here, a bit more darkness here. Not scared of darkness. It's in contrast where the fascination lies. There's a lot of darkness going on down here. Not everything you draw has to be a, ma a masterpiece either. It's okay to mess up and draw badly and learn from it. Okay, so I'm done with my, not quite, almost done with my 8B. I want to get a little bit of light 8B going on here. Now I'm going to go back to my 4B because I still have some other dark values to add in. So there's like a, a line running right there. So I'm going to get that line in. It's like where the paper ends. And 
and I'm using my pinky to stabilize my hand on the paper. So I'm kind of using my pinky as a rest. Another trick that you can use when you're drawing large pencil drawings is to put a folded piece of paper underneath your hand so you're not smudging it with your hand as you're going up and down. Um, I'm drawing that line. I need to hold my pencil like this. Okay. So there's a spot here that's lighter than the rest. I'm going to fill in some darker areas here a little bit. Then I've got this dark spot coming up. This is that medium value. There's another dark line up there. Now you can get into as much detail as you want. Okay, and that, that wraps there because of the shape. So this is part of how I show my shape. My um, shadows are wrapping around the can. And then there's that, do you see how there's that light there? So I'm going to kind of draw around that light area, kind of shade in that mid-tone, shade in there a little bit, leave that light edge. And there, when we said there's no texture on this can, that's not entirely true, right? Because there kind of is. Like I can use the texture of my drawing, my pencil strokes going down to kind of echo the shadows going down the can. So there is a slight amount of texture. It's just not, it's not, a, it's not a feature of the can, I wouldn't say. It's not something that stands out when you look at it. Again, for those lighter shadow areas, I'm going to use a, a lighter pencil actually to get those in. So I'm going to use my HB to kind of get that mid value on this side. And some of those mid values down here. I know this is slightly curved. I can see it from my angle, so I'm going to draw that in. I can't actually see that edge of the can and the thing I'm looking at, but I'm going to imagine I can. This, this line is incredibly light. It's almost not there, so I'm going to leave it very light. Leave that spot light. This is dark. I missed the dark spot, so I'm going to grab my dark pencil. And I'm going to go add that in. Maybe I couldn't see it before. Now I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to, oh, I missed the light, a mid tone here too. HB, so this is also mid tone. And this is mid tone. So you see, I'm not getting that shape of that light flare perfectly. I'm kind of just suggesting it for now. Now I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to soften up some of these. So I want to soften up this mid-tone because the texture here is fairly smooth. The texture here is fairly smooth and down here. This guy is pretty smooth too. I could choose to leave it rough. Um, just kind of cleaning my brush. You can use a paper towel, but we're out of paper towels apparently. And I didn't notice before class. So I'm just kind of filling in some of my mid-tones here with my brush. And now there's a little bit of mid-tone over here too. Now I'm actually going to switch to one of my smudge sticks because I want to actually work on darker tones, but I still want to get them smooth. So I'm going to use this kind of like, it's almost, I'm almost drawing with this. Softening up this edge because I can see that it's soft. And I can use my eraser to fix though that structure issue there in a minute. I'm not going to worry about that now. So the point that I'm trying to show you is you, you're drawing all of the elements, but you're not drawing all of them at once. You drive yourself absolutely bonkers if you try to do that. 
as a beginner at least. You could use, you could leave the Coca-Cola a rough edge, a rough texture if you wanted to use that to um, contrast with the smooth can or you can go blend it in. Decisions. Bob Ross says, time for some big decisions. Now you got to make some big decisions. Kind of filling in, filling up some of my values with the smudge stick too. And I want to, and you notice that when I'm using the smudge stick, I leave the, I start from the lightest values and I go to the darkest value. So I missed one here because um, the smudge stick picks up the graphite and holds it. So I can actually go and add graphite over here with my smudge stick. And you don't want to do that by starting with the darkest values and then going to the lightest ones. Okay, and now I'm going to smooth out my Coca-Cola because I, I decided that I want to do that. But I'm going to use the clean end of my smudge stick for this, the lighter parts. So I'm not adding graphite. I'm going to use the dark side again. And then I, I see there's a little spot here that's still a little bit unsmooth. Okay, so now I, I'm like, okay, I'm pretty happy with that texture. I'm not going for a perfect drawing. I'm going to go use my eraser. And I decide that I want to use my larger hard eraser for this and I'm going to go clean up this light spot. So I might use this small eraser around these to draw some of the more delicate edges but for now and I rolled my can. So of course now my light has changed. It doesn't matter. I just keep drawing what I see and I'll end up with something that looks like a can at the end. Okay, so I have this and then I'm going to draw that one little line that runs down there back in with my smudge stick because I can see it running across now. And uh, I just need that much. <laughs> it's true, yeah, you draw all the sides of it. Yeah, if you're, if you're a cubist, draw it from all the angles. Or the, f the Fauvists did that too. They were also interested in all the angles of the Coke can moving and if the Coke can had legs, what would it look like? Okay, so now I also see there's like a bright spot down here. I'm going to go draw that in with my eraser. I'm going to highlight this spot up. Ah, and I just rolled it back into position. Good job, Sarah. Okay. And there's a light spot right there. So I'm kind of focusing on lines right now, but they're also values. Um, so I see lines of light in these places. Okay, and then maybe I decide that I'm happy with my Coke can now. Maybe I'll go draw a shadow on the side or some background, but that's just to demonstrate to you guys when I put everything together. Now I've studied all the different elements. I'm confident that I can create a good looking Coke can, <laughs> sort of good looking. I mean, I did that drawing in 25 minutes, so um, yeah. So that's what I want you to do with everything that you draw. So your mission for this week, should you choose to accept it, is to find any object that you want to draw around the house. It can be a leaf, it could be a stick, it could be an interesting rock, it could be a, an old key or a jar if you feel like you want a challenge. Um, 
and draw it. You can look at your list of fundamentals, pick three or four to focus on, draw it, by, draw it looking just at those fundamentals. You can replay the, the things we said at the beginning um, if you want to, draw it just looking at those fundamentals and then put them all together and draw your object. Okay? And then come show me next time what you did. Okay. And then I'll also show you next time how to do a gradient, how to use a gradient as a tool. Okay. Um, if you could kindly put the numbers that are on this tab back in the tin in the order that I have them, that would be great. I would appreciate that. Anything that is an HB, a B, or an F goes in this. Loose. 